because even though I've like written them out, I then still like just ad lib on them. I'm just, what are you doing? Stop. Yeah, um, it's true. You can quite easily get sort of carried away. And I've kept thinking of things, you know, and thinking, well, because there's so much you could say, and there's so much there to be discussed, discussed, and especially at this time with everything going on. So I've been trying to edit things down, but then other things keep coming into my head. Yeah. Anyway, I've washed my glasses because they were full of paint and looked terrible. So. <laughs> I'm sure that like adds to adds <laughs> to the look. I'm definitely an artist. There's paint on my glasses. Um, <laughs> I washed it off now, Jen. I should have thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it feels really odd because obviously I'm not in the studio and I'm not surrounded by my work. Yeah. Uh, I've got some of my daughter's work here and I've got my mum. Oh, that picture pottery piece that was a friend gave me that um it's it's a reproduction but it's it's not like one of the ones i have at home yeah um, but it's there and it i thought i thought it looked okay it's sort of on my shoulder <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hello claire grace hello jen it's good to see you it's good to see you as well how are you I'm fine, thank you. Are you all right? Yes, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I'm happy to be celebrating International Women's Day today with you. Yes, happy women, happy International Women's Day to you as well, Jen. Thank it's you, thank you very Jennifer. much. And thank you for joining me and for helping West Yorkshire Print Workshop tell women's stories and celebrate women in print this month. Um, so to start off, let's find out a little bit more about Claire Grace. How long have you been an artist? When did you start? What's your media? Tell us about you. Okay, well, I have always drawn and painted. It's always what I've done from being very little. So it's just part of me, it's what I do. Um, and I'm dyslexic. So <laughs> really, in some ways, it's the only thing that I was good at. <laughs> so that's why it's formed my life and it has become who I am. Um, I trained as a printed textile designer, mm -hmm. uh, partly because that I, I remember asking somebody what, uh, when I had to choose which pathway to go down, what had the most painting in it and drawing in it? And they said, oh, go for the printed textile. So that's what I did. Yeah. Um, and I just got really hooked with putting things into pattern, but also screen printing. But I've always loved printing. Um, on my foundation, litho printing, I just adored. Um, and, and etching, but the screen printing uh, with, with, with printing onto textiles was then the thing I trained in. So screen printing has definitely been a major part, but part of me always wants to be a painter. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really, uh, I, I think um, the printmaking I do, I, I managed to be able to use those skills and my drawing skills because I uh, when I do my uh, screen printing it's very much uh, done directly it's drawn it's not on the computer it's not digital I still it's very analog I'm very still you know the old the old um, the old skills of, of yeah. screen printing but there is nothing like printing a length of fabric having a repeat Part of it I like because I have a partner, I have a buddy to, to work with. You can't print a length on your own. You have to send that squeegee over and then they catch it and then they bring it back to you. And it's a real teamwork and you go down, down the, the table and then back up the table together. So it's almost like a dance. And it's when I, I, I was in, uh, I, I taught at many different art colleges for 35 years. <laughs> And then I took voluntary redundancy four years ago. Uh, and you know, the only thing I wanted to do was to actually go and print a length of fabric. I, I, I just had to, I blew all my money on screens. And very luckily, I, I was very lucky. I got a studio at West Yorkshire Print Workshop with a, a textile table in it. Um, and uh, it's been wonderful. I've been there ever since. And it was just, um, it, West Yorkshire Print Workshop in many ways took, it, my career took off at West Yorkshire Print Workshop. Printmaking has been very much part of my life. Um, so I was a founder member back in the eighties. And that's then how I got my teaching was working at West Yorkshire Print Workshop. Uh, and then, uh, then at the end of my teaching career, 
they stepped in and uh, and uh, I was able to start printing again. So that's a little bit of the story of why, what I do. So of course at West Yorkshire Print Workshop, because you know, you've been there from the very start, we see so much of your work and there's definitely a theme of feminism and a class that undertone runs through the prints that you the, that you make and the work that you put out what's the what's the inspiration behind that what's the source of that theme that's in your work right my influence I think very much is to do with my upbringing mm -hmm. um and very much to do with the women that you know the, my grandma my aunties my mom my sisters they're all sort of connected in some way in, in the work that I do um, I was just thinking about this. Um, my mum was born in 1925. So that means that women didn't even, the majority of women didn't have the vote oh. <laughs> until 1928. So she was, you know, the, if you were a woman who was over 30 uh, and you were, had property, you, could, you had the vote in 1918. Um, Again, you know, there's some class things going on there. Isn't yeah. there? My mum's uh, mom and her sister, they, they would not have the vote until 1928. And it does start making you think about how you are influenced by your mother and what their experience are as a, as a daughter. As a, mm. uh, so um, I think even though um, with my grandma and I think my grandma was born in 1880 and I would my grandma taught me how to knit and um, I remember lots of you know she used to make um, flower um, glue for me so I could make collages on us on a Sunday when I used to go and see her um, and we used to talk and she worked in the mill yeah and um, once she had children, then that was it. She couldn't. I've got a wonderful photograph of her in the mill, actually. And uh, she she wouldn't work after she had a child. Then that would it would be it. And with my mum, um, she was not uh, allowed to work by my granddad. My granddad said, "No wife of my son is going to work." <laughs> so I always felt my mum was quite. Um, uh, <sighs> quite sad about that really um, she did used to say that because she was three years before any children came along mm. and she used to say those three years were terrible because she wasn't allowed to go out to work but my granddad had such a hold on everybody that um, that was how it was and there was a working class sort of thing as well about knowing your place and doing as you're told so yeah. that you know she wasn't she didn't feel she was in a position to, to fight that. And I think right the way through her work, uh, her life rather, she, um, you know, she worked very hard bringing four children up. Um, I think she always felt that was, that was a sense of, of sadness for her. And she wanted to be a commercial artist. So she did was- she? did. So she was very um, creative. She did fantastic, you know, flower arranging was her thing. She used to enter all the shows and do these most wonderful creations and a really good sense of colour. And, um, and uh, I, I just feel sad that, she, I, I always feel she was, was unfulfilled in that sort of sense. Mm. However, she did like her shelves and she used to have Staffordshire pottery. And she used to make her little compositions with Staffordshire pottery, take them down, wash them, put them all back up. So um, in some ways that was a sort of creative outlet for her. Yeah. Um, and uh, I used to think, because we lived in a council house, and I used to think we were posh because we had Staffordshire pottery, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and of course Staffordshire pottery was sort of um, roughly potted for the masses. Yeah. It was definitely something for the poorer people to have on their shelves. But they, some of them had little messages. And it's funny, I've seen one on Instagram this morning. There's one where there's a man and a woman fighting for the bre breeches and saying, who wears the breeches? Um, and so they, they did do, there, there's some funny ones with men and women with the baby, with the woman sort of pushing the baby onto the man. So mm. there was, it has a little commentary there in the, so, somehow. Um, but these, in, in, um, these became sort of a metaphor for, for class and for feminism as well, because I sort of was, 
sort of annoyed that that's all she was left with really was messing around with ornaments on, on the shelf. And then I became aware that um, there was all these sayings about being left on the shelf for a woman. Yeah. This, what I would say for women, you know, don't get left on the shelf, meaning, you know, don't, well, you don't get married, you know, <laughs> not find a man, yeah. you're left on the shelf. And also the idea of an ornament, of the female being ornaments. And yeah, to look at. It's a female, aren't they? Mm. Um, and I did actually make little sugar ornaments with these on, which were like, you know, um, uh, uh, we collect dust. I, I made a little ornament out of sugar with a woman actually hoovering up and, yeah. and those sort of things. Um, so they became that metaphor and they sort of had the sort of the, the class thing in them. Uh, but also I used to wrap thread around the ornaments to try and just obliterate the sort of forms and the shapes. But the threads were sort of representative of what my aunt, my aunties worked in the mill all the time, all, all their lives. They never married. Mm. It's interesting to get called spinster, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so the idea of a thread um, sort of connected with, with, with the feminist idea and almost like the idea that they were obliterated, um, but sort of obliterating the form that had almost I, you know, I, I felt because they were women, they were, they didn't have that those opportunities. Um, so I've, I, I did start to develop those into prints. Um, so I have ones where it's, I look up to you, which is obviously a referencing, well, I'm saying obvious, I don't think it maybe is that obvious if, a certain, if, if you've not seen the sketch, but there's a sketch where it's, I look up to you and it's about um, class. Mm. I look up to you because you're upper class and I look down at him because he's working class. Hmm. So you know, have these ornaments that seemed, I, I could then put a little message, but there's, they're very ambiguous really uh, in what I put down for the, for the messages. Um, sometimes I think I'm a bit too, um, if I'm trying to put a message over, sometimes you can have too, too much ambiguity, sometimes, because people can read it however they wish to read it, can't they? But yeah, then in some ways I like that because this one where it's like, I look up to you, it's a big dog. Well, if people like their dogs, don't they? So if that's what they want to see, they can see that. But if they want to see another way of looking at it, they can do. Um, so maybe I should just carry on having it almost like a little secret, a, a, a sort of secret message. Um, but um, I went to Stoke and I found this ornament of two sisters. I've done quite a lot of prints with the two sisters. Yeah. Um, it said Torquay on the bottom of this. It's, two, it's basically two, two sisters arm in arm, two women arm in arm. And um, you find it really weird that they actually made an, or they actually made an ornament and <laughs> it started yeah. to two women. So it was really striking when I saw it. But it said Torquay underneath, and I thought, well, it must be like a present from Torquay. Yeah. Um, but then at the side, there was a label, and it says, two sisters um, who had a tragic life, causing them to become eccentric. <laughs> I thought, that's really, what an amazing little thing, you know. And it's this, I'm always interested as well, this idea of the things that happen to you in life, uh, you know, make you... Who, who you are and um that's the, again that sort of connection of being influenced by how you're you, you're how um, you're brought up um but i did some research and it, it it turns out that these two sisters were going out with two brothers and one of the brothers shot the other accidentally shot the other brother oh and him. <laughs> so and uh, these poor sisters were grieving obviously <laughs> Can you imagine that though? That your boyfriend, your person you love, has actually killed your sister's boyfriend. I mean, it's just horrendous, isn't it? Complicated, yeah. Awful. I mean, and it could have been that these two sisters just parted, but what happened was they just became inseparable. And they used to be seen arm in arm walking around um around the Torquay area. Mm. Um so they they must have been such a sight that they made this pot this this ornament for them um but it just made me feel sad because they obviously 
um, were grieving and deeply grieving and um, they didn't used to talk either they just used to walk and they were quite eccentrically you know dressed um, and people would take that as a little memory for, for the, from their holiday it has it, it it's just so sad the idea that these poor women were actually um, mourning and that's what 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 happened you know yeah. that they, but yet they were just these two they they remembered <laughs> a lot of like ordinary people were never remembered in it, but they are remembered because of that and um i just i just thought how how interesting they were that um it wasn't um you know, you know, it wasn't a Greek goddess who was sat on your mantelpiece. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe a me mycin or something. You know, it, it was these two, two, uh, two women. But it's a very strong, strong imagery. So I've, I've used those in my work. Uh, but then it, it did make me start doing some of the drawings of sisters. And mm. it made me think about, um, you know, the, uh, what I liked was the linking of hands, arms. The linking of arms, I like that very much. Um, so I did some work on two sisters uh, and some of my own drawings. I tried to, to take them off, they, so they weren't an ornament anymore, but I've always ended up putting them back as an ornament. I worry about that because it's like this idea of keeping them in their place. I almost want to free these women so they're not stuck on the ornament anymore. But I tend to put them back there but maybe that's because it says something that they're still stuck that they're not quite free enough to be able to get away um and so i've done a lot of overprinting so it's almost like these sisters and these women are like all sort of caught together and that they're uh, you know they're, they're caught from different periods of time because mm. you Staffordshire then I've done some more modern women and they're all like led so I do I love to overprint and I love to um to to freestyle um so that um it's more like painting then I have a set of screens and then I just keep overprinting and overprinting and I it I'm, I'm involved with the process then right throughout. I'm making decisions all the way through. Whereas if I make an addition, I've got all my screens and I'm just, I know where they're going to go. And it's a case of just printing it. Yeah. But when I'm in the process of doing a freestyle, I like the fact that I'm really connecting with it and, uh, and making decisions. And I've become far more freestyle recently, um, just because it's a, it's a freedom. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, I'm not stuck with just having to produce the, the one, one image. Um, and you never know, what I love is it surprises, you never know what you're going to get. And sometimes you do something and then you, you, you we, and, and something happens that you didn't expect to happen. Uh, so these, these women are like sort of caught and laid up and I can play with the idea of masking out certain things. So if something I want to show, I can keep it and other things I can just get rid of. Um, so I've done quite a lot with the two sisters. Then I've got, I went on and I printed, um, when the Me Too was all happening. Yeah. I have to say there's a little bit of anger in, in what I do, really. Um, I, if it's, you feel angry. I mean, feel, I feel, mom, I've had a conversation, my, my poor mum died a few years ago, mm. uh, but I did have conversations with her because I did some work where I was just doing where she was just tying knots or trying to, this idea of repetitive, you know, being repetitive. Yeah. The printmaking, the, the idea of just keeping on doing something. And I was doing this video about, about just keeping on to do with the textiles and the tying of knots. And she, she actually just said, don't, don't worry, I, you know, I, I don't worry about it. Don't, I don't want you to be angry for me. I've had a very happy life and I've enjoyed my children and bringing my children up. Uh, and um, so she, she was sort of saying, no, I think you feel more angry about it than, than I do. Mm. Um, but that's because I'm a different genera you know, yeah. it's a different generation, and I have conversations with my daughter as well. So you, 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 you pass things on. Mm. 
Um, but we'll maybe come to that a little bit, bit later on. Anyway, I did this drawing um, of, of women in different, different positions. You may see the print. Um, so I've, it was this idea as well of um, the, the, the body language. Yeah. You know, you know, when you put your arms on your hips, you've got, you're in charge, aren't you? Know? Yeah. Um, and it somehow relates back again to the ornaments because it's this idea they are shaped, you know, they're caught in a shape and a, a form. Um, so I have some, I, I, I drew some women where they've got the hands on the hips. Yeah. I drew some women where they're laden down with bags. I drew some women who were, had their arm in the air and their mouth open to shout and to have a voice. Um, I was thinking about this idea that, you know, maybe if you feel you haven't got a voice, you know, maybe, maybe imagery becomes more powerful. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mm -hmm. think that's really interesting because going back to the idea of uh, you know print and, uh, and and textile printing, having this um, political um, tradition as well, you know, it, so it's it's that idea of, of the, the images being able to to say what you're trying to say, and uh, so again I played with them that the, that image because I did think it was a really nice drawing that I did. I actually did it with gouache. It was, you know, when the gouache becomes really tacky, I did yeah. it. Yeah. And you could just pull it up. So it's an like, idea of you finding something and you just, <laughs> yeah, and you run with it. And, and I printed a little bit onto the, onto the drawings. Uh, and uh, I, I, so then it was this idea, because they were on a shelf, you know, I, I, I printed somewhere, print, printed them on shelves, uh, but now they become... Um, when they're overprinted and that, I like the fact that you've got a woman who's all weighed down with bags, then you've got the women with their hands on the hips and you've got the women with their arm in the air and you're layering them because you're going through these stages sometimes, you know, of, of empowerment, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's uh, you know a, a prints that I've really enjoyed doing and um, have got uh, I think quite a powerful sort of female image. And does it come about that theme? Does it come about quite organically for you because of how you were brought up? Um, you know the situations that you're aware that you saw your grandmother and your mother and your aunties in. Um, you know the si different situation that maybe you see your daughter in now. Does it come through quite organically or? Is there a consciousness of, you know, my work, your work can be a channel for telling women's stories? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I think it is something, there is an organic uh, element to it. Mm. Uh, I, I, I do think it's sort of these things that you, you sort of feel and you take in uh, and they then start to to come out um and i think i think actually quite a lot is it, when i'm printing it's quite organic yeah um, i don't i might see something while i'm printing and think oh yeah that's what i can really pull out but there is then another sort of consciousness i do you know i find that really interesting because yes there is a consciousness that i want to put over a message yeah but when I'm actually doing the work, it feels like it's just just coming from within. Mm. I, was, I was thinking about um, influences that I had when I was very young, when I was, well, I say very young, when I was at, at college. And I, I do remember one more, one time when I saw uh, Judy Chicago's um, dinner party. Uh, I think it was on an omnibus, which isn't on anymore, or an arena, it was one of those. And I remember going back into college feeling really, <laughs> you know, energized by it and telling everybody, telling all my friends, you must see this. This is really incredible. And uh, I've, I mean, I had just looked at her video recently again. Um, Cause she talks about, well, women don't belong on the table, she says. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, I'm thinking women don't belong on the shelves, you know. <laughs> Um, and I thought that was quite a nice sort of connection. So, so these things that you see, you know, you sort of connect, and I think you hold those things 
and they come they come through um and I, I, it's just um little things through life isn't it odd how um you 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 sort of store them up like talking to my aunties and they said well it was it was lovely when you were all born but you know it was really special when your brother was born yeah and I was born in this the 60s my when you think my mum was born in well I was born in 1960 let me fess up to that <laughs> my my mum was born in, in 1925 so there's all her ways of doing and things which somehow feed back into into what you're doing don't they and then and then you're influenced by what you see mm. and what you're you know, so uh, but I do remember that really vividly of um, feeling when my aunties had said that you know I used to get really quite angry as a as a, a sort of teenager I was really but it was usually about the idea of we, you know, we, you know, it's not fair, you know, my brother doesn't wash up. Yeah. You know, and the, <laughs> the thing was, I used to get back, they used to say, well, he goes to the butchers. <laughs> so it's this idea of the female and male yeah. sort of roles being engendered. And I've tried really hard to try and shake those off for my son and for my daughter. Um, but um, it's still there. <laughs> I think these some of these things are still there. We still have to keep pushing, don't we? And sometimes I'm shocked, like with the Me Too, you know, you just think, Grace, this is still happening. What yeah. is going on? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's amazing in some ways how much hasn't changed because when, uh, so my brother is the, um only boy in the family and the next boy that ended up being my cousin's son came 30 years later and everybody was over the moon finally a boy and you do you do wonder a little bit why are we that bothered um but yeah there was definitely a you know my old my brother is the oldest of the children in the family and you know is the next one going to be a boy is the next one going to be a boy when you had girl one girl two girl three and then yeah so it's amazing really how much hasn't changed and you know it does make you think about where that comes from but obviously so much has has changed as well um even if it's just about you know talking about things more you know you say the mo the me too movement makes you think gosh this is still going on um and obviously you just hear about it more because you talk about it more but as um as the world has changed has the story of your work changed at all have you got um have you got angrier as you know stuff about me too comes out has it got a little bit more you know, less fond and more angry. Has the story of your work changed? Has the world's changed? Oh, um, I think it's, if you sort of, if you're connected with these things, then yes, it, it most likely does. It, there's a sort of up and down sort of quality to some things. I mean, I can see certain things have been, you know, are far better than they ever were. I think the Arts Council have been working hard to-, to That's to, good. To, that's, that's you know a difference as well um so uh, th there was there was an i did a series of um prints about britannia um and um, really because i was um <laughs> angry about brexit <laughs> again they were sort of quite ambiguous you could read them however you want but i mm. used britannia as a, a symbol of britain and the sort of awful nationalism that was sort of coming out um but then i realized it was that people were sort of you know this is britannia isn't it so there were some people who were <laughs> were very much nationalistic who quite like probably like the work and mm -hmm. uh, and i tried to give her a, a sad mouth and i'll we'll try to make her look pathetic and i try you know i put i put a crumpet on the end of a fork and I, I tried to, to bring it down a little bit more certainly a poor lion was uh, was looking really quite sad and pathetic um but I don't with the black 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 lives matter mm. and you start to look at the um, where she came from with the British Empire those those prints now I put them to one side 
and I thought about printing over them or doing something with them because it it it, it's, it upset me so much. Yeah. And uh, I did realize the last few prints that I was doing with Britannia, I've obliterated her. I've just kept printing over and over and over on her. Um, and I think that's probably a, a response uh, to, to that. I think certain things are all connected. And, and I think if, if you look broader and you look across the world as to what is happening with women and women's rights, it's quite heartbreaking. Yeah. You know, and you know, the power is still, it's, it's, it's the, the white man, isn't it, really? Um, I don't, it's, I don't want to try and get into the sort of the binary aspect of the men and women. I think uh, for me as well, feminism is about, um, it's about values and, you know, it's not just a gender thing. It's, yeah. Um, and uh, I think it's, it's interesting as well about having discussions about gender, it would be lovely, wouldn't it, if people had just seen that they are um, people. Yeah. <laughs> that we're all the people and that we're all valued. And, and, um, uh, and, and uh, so we have, that's, you know, maybe, you don't know these things that are changing. Maybe that's maybe where we might head. Uh, but um, there's still a long way to go. But there has been, as I say, some certainly in terms of my privileged, because <laughs> I, I, I am, I'm privileged as being a white woman, aren't I? Mm. Um, so I think there have been some, definitely some, some uh, um, things taken forward if I look at what it was like in the 1970s. Yeah. However, then you get, however, you see, this is it. It's like that all the time, isn't it? However, you get, Trump who talked about grabbing somebody's pussy, you know, and this I just and you just think, hang on a minute. That no, that should have been right. That's it. How yeah. any woman could vote for Trump, I just don't get it. So there must be something going on which we is not right. And um I, yeah, well, let's hope he never well, there we are. He's <laughs> Hasn't he? And let's hope that things will, will get stronger. And step the same with Parliament and that, you know, how many f female MPs are there? You know, mm. how we have a way to go. Um, and but also um, we need to all move together to support each other. And, uh, you know, I, I just find it heartening when you do see movements like Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Um, that are uh, the me too and all those you feel heartened to see that those things are happening and that um you know hopefully it'll be we, we can start to step forward but it's just such a long it just takes too long doesn't it that's yeah that's the problem you know well, i think um, yeah i think that's it but you know the fight is is still is still a fight and don't want it to feel like a fight at all really um and there's a I think there's, of course, there's a lot of work that needs to be done and creativity and, you know, your work, the work of others is a lovely way to explore that. Um, we've been talking a lot, particularly last week, as part of um, National Careers Week, we were talking a lot about creative careers. And uh, I think we see our industry, this industry is typically very vibrant and progressive. And I think that draws in a lot of people. Um, but obviously there's still, there's still work to be done everywhere. What in, in the, you know, in the artist world, in the creative industry, what do you still think needs to be done? What would you like to see next? Oh, now I think that's a big question, isn't it? As to what should come next or what, I think, um, I think artists shouldn't be scared. You know, I, I do honestly think sometimes I have pulled back on certain things that I haven't put out really? there. Scared. Yeah, uh, this is dreadful. It shouldn't be like this. But I don't think we should be, we should try not be scared. We should try and push on and, um, and support each other as well. 
you know this idea of the competition i think it's it shouldn't be about competition it should be about sharing and caring and i'm hoping with like with covid and everything hopefully we're starting to see a kinder more yeah say feminine world and uh, and that we listen to each other and we try to understand each other and through um the visual like i say if you feel you've not got a voice then images can become very powerful then those images are really badly needed aren't they in the world yeah and and images um can be very strong and and built up and shared and 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 promoted um it's i just i did text to just ask my daughter which female artist she was looking at or what you know just this idea of connecting with the younger generation they are the hope you young people <laughs> are the hope <laughs> and um, we, um we need to make sure that that people feel empowered to be able to say what they need to say she hasn't I, I was a little late in actually texting she hasn't come back um but i she she loves sort of philly de barlow and uh, when i watched a, a video of philly de barlow talking about her work mm. as a person when i was watching judy chicago she talks she's an artist for you know she's well so is judy chicago but her, her it, she was having to keep pushing you know she she became a campaigner and whereas philly de barlow i'm an artist i'm talking about my work um, and I think that's really very important that you you don't need to you 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 need to just feel you you have to do and say and be who you are yeah and it has to just go out into the world and maybe the simple fact that if you are a woman working then you're bound to have you you know you you're bound to have the the, the influence of being a woman in in your work yeah you know that's who you are and that that can be enough and you just have to feel empowered that you can just do it and be who you are yeah uh, so I, I, it's been interesting actually tuning into the west Yorkshire print workshop uh, talks that they've been having the last few months mm -hmm. and uh, there's been a lot of very interesting female printmakers if nobody's caught it you can get it on the website uh, and the next artist, uh, uh, next printmaker is Sumi Pereira. Sumi is the most wonderful printmaker and the most wonderful person. And, you know, it, it just it's on the 11th of March, you mustn't miss it. Um, but she is fantastic and she pushes forward. She's just so much energy uh, and has so much to say through, through her, her printmaking. Um, but it's just wonderful printmaking. And it's been so good to be able to see um, th these wonderful uh, female printmakers talking about their work. Uh, and all are different and all they are who they are. And um, it's just, it's powerful, powerful stuff. I think that's, I think that's a really important takeaway is that we, um, all and can push for whatever industries we are in, but particularly in ours, where we're very privileged to be in, that we do um, give platforms to, um, to women and their stories and celebrate their differences. And like you say, we're a community um, to celebrate each other rather than make it a bit of a competition. Because um, I just think at the moment, that's the last thing, the last thing that we need. So so i was just going to say jen that in some you know there isn't just one message there isn't no. just one thing which is that there's all sorts of things there to be taken in and to be understood uh and 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 i think that's what um um printmaking art is that it, it can it can do that um and and be be powerful it can be that that voice for for everybody so in that in that spirit, um, you've mentioned a couple and, um, you know, some of the work that we've done and the, the talks that we've got coming up. But just in general, like in the spirit of today and Women's History Month, is there anybody that you want to kind of shout out now to our community or to celebrate, um, you know, as a as a as an artist or as an ally for telling women's stories? You know, who do you want to in particular celebrate today? Do you know what, Jen? I'm really, I, I feel I'm going to chicken out on this almost. <laughs> I find it really difficult to, 
to um, just pull um, one person out um, because there are so many voices. And because I, I, I have thought about this and thought about it. Um, and I just find it really, really difficult to think about that. Um, that's a good that's a good thing that's a good thing that there's so there's so there's so many and there's so much and you yeah. know you people can go out and explore for themselves yes exactly it's like it's like you offering me a chocolate box well I'm sorry but I just wouldn't be able to make my mind up which one I would want I'd just have to eat them all and mm. um it, it, it's it, I, I'm really what I'm the, the irony of this is <laughs> when I was teaching, I was very keen that I would show women's work work to the students. They always yeah. I always made sure that I, I had to, to women to, to show them and um and when I look at it, there was not <laughs> they had it's just so poor there's not enough of them is there no. you know there's not enough but there i'm saying well there's a lot and i can't just choose from them so maybe that is an indication that things are getting better yeah. um, uh, and um, and also it's just this idea of singling one out i just find that too difficult to single one out um but but looking back in history it's in, it's just very very sad i will mention barbara hepworth because <laughs> because she comes from not far yeah. from Yorkshire Print Workshop and um, just you know she had triplets with Ben Nicholson uh, and a painter and uh, how interesting is how she's she had a bad press she had triplets and they had she had such a bad press because she was put down as this woman who was so keen on being you know doing her work you know she was pilloried for doing her work and men <laughs> never be you know this that if, um then it really you know it did color people's views on her and then recently there's been a lot more there's been articles there's been a book written about how difficult how awful that was for her to actually you know, she struggled with postnatal depression and how how difficult it was was for her to have a career and have the you know the children. And it's just the idea of how um, women can be, you know, quite easily put down because of them if they make the choice of their career or. And I just think that's sad, and I'm hoping that things are getting better with that. Um, that. I think I think about Lee Krasner. I'm sorry, see, I sound a bit old fashioned now because I'm on all the old ones, isn't it? With um, Jackson Pollock. Heartbreaking. That she so I saw a fantastic exhibition at the Barbican. Well, it must be two years ago, is it? Um, and a fantastic um, ex exhibition, but she gave her career to Pollock, didn't she? You know, it's that sort of sacrifice. She didn't see herself as as, as important, you know, an important artist to push on. Mm. Um, so I'm, uh, and then we've got Kusama, who I really love, but she's 91, you know, and she's suddenly <laughs> getting, <laughs> she's suddenly getting the the uh, the, the exposure that uh, that she deserves. Um, but I, I'm sure there are a lot of young young artists coming up and that those are the ones I would be wanting to mention and talk about and I in some ways I don't feel I've got quite enough hold on that I need to get that sorted people can now start to maybe recommend people to look at that might be quite nice on this feed actually yeah I think so I think that's a really a really nice point to to kind of close up on really is that um you know also like once you started mentioning names that's it then you can't you, you know you can't stop and more and more names come but that um you know whether you're just starting out whether this is all new to you whether you're unsure or whether you're like seasoned and you've you've been doing this for a long time there's always you know more people to look at more work to learn from um so that's a very that's a very nice way to uh to kind of 
I don't know, to kind of start to come to the end, really. That's a very strong um, message that we can all take away. And I think definitely if people can, you know, if you're watching this now, you can share below that who you think we should be having a look at and who we should be taking some inspiration on and, and learning more about. I think that's really nice. Um, Claire, I, mean, I can't wait for that. No? That'd be awesome. Thing, yeah. that's it now I just want to I just want to see what everybody's got to say um yeah. sharing you see this is what it's about and promoting each other mm -hmm. and it's not just for it's not just for us to to share and celebrate I think today especially and all this month is definitely the time to do it and then we can carry it on after um Claire thank you um, thank you Jen. that's been good fun I enjoyed that I'm good. sorry I do I do go on a bit sometimes, but uh, there we are. Happy International Women's Day for everybody yeah. around the world. My thoughts are with all those. Anyway, we won't. I'll start again if I'm not careful. But <laughs> way to go. We must support each other. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.